Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today, we are going to talk about coaching. Whether you're a coach who has clients or you are a prospective client of a coach or looking to hire a coach, this episode is going to be for you. We are going to dive into a lot of the nitty gritty behind the scenes of growing a business as a coach, talking about anxiety as we grow our businesses, but also we're going to bust some myths per se about coaching, the industry as a whole, and find out if as coaches, we need to be certified and find out as someone who might want to hire a coach, should the coach be certified? All right. Without Any further ado, I'm going to bring Lisa Pachens onto The Robin Graham Show. Lisa, welcome. Thank you so much, Robin. I'm excited to hear the answers to those questions too. (laughs) Considering they're coming from you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we'll both create it in the moment. That's the magic of these conversations. That's right. I know it will be powerful. You are a master certified coach. So when it comes to coach credentials, you are the creme de la creme. And I know you mentor a lot of people who are on the path of getting credentialed. So I think it's super cool. You're a wealth of information. Obviously, I enjoy you immensely and think the world of you. So I am really excited to have you here and have you join us. And listeners, just a side note, I want to share a little fact that Lisa is actually friends with Emily Golden, who was on the show and talked about her book, The Golden Rule, way back when. So it's amazing to me how small the world is. And here we are all in the Philadelphia region. So I've actually gotten to meet Lisa in person. Haven't met Emily in person yet, but we do still stay in touch. So I just wanted to share that with you, that there is a lot of power to building relationships and bringing new people into your life that give you the opportunity to grow in unique ways and you can support each other. All right, Lisa, with all of that said, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and what brought you to this point in your journey? Amen. Yes. Um, I will... Well, I'll start with a a little bit about myself and my business. I am a master certified coach. I've been a master certified coach for four years. I've been a coach for 10 years and I work with primarily female founders who identify as underfulfilled overachievers, those who are high performers, big hearted and reach a glass ceiling of sorts in their own lives. And I work with this population because I was that population. I was constantly searching for my purpose, feeling underfulfilled. I was a high performer, a perfectionist, uh, and I still am a recovering perfectionist and, and control freak. It's a lifelong recovery. But there was a huge gap that I saw in my own life and Consequently, consequently, the marketplace in being able to have a mentor, a guide and a mirror to reflect one's gaps and have you take responsibility for your own life. I had one conversation with a coach that did what a decade of therapy didn't do for me, which completely changed my outlook and had me look to become a coach. So I bring with me a history of high performance. I was an athlete in college. I always prided myself on working really hard and achieving well and in healing myself. I wanted to bring this type of uh, healing responsibility, education and our own greatness and leadership and ability to find purpose to others that I didn't think was in the marketplace. Now I'm here 10 years later. And as we were talking about coaches are a dime a dozen, but I feel like coaches that really help with transformation, help to change the core of who we are to allow full self-expression uh, from a from from a base point, from a character building experience is rare. So that's what I'm that's what I'm peddling, if you will, is the ability to, as coaches, better ourselves, better our craft, deepen our our craft, um, design purpose for ourselves. So we're creating satisfaction and we are um, living a great life, not necessarily an easy life, but a great life and modeling that for others 
through our work. Mm, I love that. And I love the fact that you used the word mirror Mm. because a lot of times we are as coaches and I I have to specify, like I'm a business strategist. I'm a business consultant. Mm -hmm. I add the phrase coach in there because a lot of times it's asking those questions that help someone see something uniquely Mm -hmm. versus telling them something to do. Um, it has to be a right fit. However, with that said, um, I think that we all on this journey have experiences and there's someone a few steps behind us. And when I say few steps, it could be months or years. And because of those experiences, we're able to shed light for them. And it is almost like a reflection, like, oh my gosh, I can look at you and see what I can become. Yes. Yes. And um, what you said about coaching, I think is really important on various levels. And I know we wanted to get to this, uh, this topic. I think the label of coach is very, very broad. Like Uh you can be a coach in so many different ways. And that includes consulting and mentorship and guiding and sports performance and, consulting and marketing strategy. It, it, I don't think there's anything wrong with the label as coach, but I think the complication comes from the distinction between using coach as a, like a business label versus the coaching industry as a credentialed strategic um, field, almost like therapy and psychology is a field, or you can mm-hmm. call yourself a therapist, but psychology is specifically a field. Oh, I love that you differentiated that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard people call themselves business therapists or um, marketing therapists, but they're not actually, uh, they don't have a PsyD. They don't have a LCSW. Uh And then there's psychology as a field. So that to me is, is a distinction and being credentialed from the international coach federation to me is like the field of psychology. It's getting the education that allows you to understand coaching as a process and coaching as the thing that will further the person that you're working with. Whereas, you know, a coach can then bring in so many different tool sets like they can be coaching or they can be consulting or they can be strategizing with the client. Mm-hmm. Mm, I love that. So when you, we let's talk about that for a second. So, mm-hmm. because this is, this is something that I have kind of like strategy has always been my jam. Like I'm a thinker and evaluator. Mm-hmm. So to be able to create a roadmap, a strategy to get from point A to point B or to Z, um, that's kind of my gift. But when you are choosing to work with someone, like we have phrases, mentor, coach, consultant, strategist. When you're choosing someone, and this is more for the business perspective, I think if we're looking for someone for our life, we're not looking for a life consultant, we could Mm. be looking for a life mentor or a life coach not necessarily a life strategist, um, (laughs) maybe a career strategist, but let's break down those words. What do they mean to you as a master certified coach? Mm. So uh, first I want to, I want to explain what a master certified coach is. So master certified coach is the highest tier of credentialing in the coaching industry per the International Coach Federation, which is the only credentialing field. And there's a difference between getting certified, which you can do at any old course, or getting credentialed, which is a through a governing body. And that governing body helps to distinguish those things that you're speaking to, specifically the distinctions of uh, coaching versus mentoring versus teaching uh, versus consulting and therapy. So there's really like five, five main differences to me, coaching, especially at the master level is a very pure sense of Socratic method. It is 
a process designed to elicit and empower the other individuals' answers and knowledge from within. And I find that because we have access to so much information nowadays, it's so easy to get information. We don't actually need information. What we need is to remember that we can generate all of the answers inside of us. And society does a really great job of separating ourselves from the ability to trust us and trust ourselves. And so a lot of the process of coaching is learning to trust ourselves in our own process, remember our brilliance and figure it, really figure it out for ourselves. And it's an, it's an equal partnership. A mentor is someone who's gone ahead and done it, done whatever that person wants already and looks back and goes, I can support you. I can help you kind of like a guru or or an advisor. And that has consulting in it. Teaching is more like lecturing. I have this academic book of information that I want to impart on you in the best way possible. And I hope that you absorb it. Consulting. and, And these are all my words, by the way, I could be wrong and you can have different, different words. Consulting and strategist, I think is, um, more of a, you are an expert in a particular set of ways that your clients can find answers. Uh, and therapist. So in therapy, the relationship between your client and the provider is a patient is a patient doctor relationship. So there's there's medical knowledge, there is diagnoses involved. And there's so much overlap between all of those fields. There's so much gray area, which is why I think it's so important to have education, especially in your own field over what is your purview and what is everyone else's and be able to say that actually might be therapy. That might be strategy, or I might want to send you to Robin to work on your marketing because, you know, I can, I can ask you questions and elicit your own greatness. But when it comes to strategy, she is the woman for you. You know what? I love what you just said about referring because (laughs) we could be all of that. We all have our own hats, right? And Mm. a lot of us are multi-passionate, multi-talented, but if it's not in our own set of expertise and skills, Mm. that's the best thing to do. We don't need to keep it all to ourselves. The best thing to do is like, I would never bring somebody on to help them as a life coach i'd be Mm -hmm. like nope call lisa call emily call somebody but don't call me (laughs) (laughs) now that that to be said there's a lot to say you know as you're doing strategy and if you have a mindset block or a money mindset block or something like that okay here's Mm -hmm. some tools to navigate that Mm -hmm. but again it's more teaching it's more educating it's not Mm -hmm. necessarily that coaching and pulling all that out from within solely, so to speak. Yes. Um, but I love that you said that because I think a lot of times in our world today, people have a scarcity mindset and that scarcity mm-hmm. mindset brings them to that point of, I've got to keep all this close. I can't let this mm-hmm. go. I can't share. And so I love that you said that it's, it's really recognizing, right? What our expertise is, and then giving what's not within our wheelhouse to someone else who has that expertise. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's why it's so important, especially for entrepreneurs and female founders to do their own work so that they can get to a place of an abundance mindset. And I think, so the scarcity mindset is prevalent. I think that scarcity is also collapsed with performance too. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're extremely common in our society and prevent us from being able to see that there are enough seats at the table from, it prevents us from collaborating. It prevents us from creating referrals. I'm a firm believer in a rising tide lifts all ships, but you can't get to that place until you work on your own scarcity and performance mentality. And our our culture is so um, focused on our ability to produce, on our ability to know everything, on our ability to have all of the answers. And there's a problem that 
that is uh, intrinsic to not having the answers, which then results in our inability to be vulnerable and to ask for help and to receive help. And I think specifically as women, we have stops around asking for help because we're meant to be the caretakers to hold the containers to, um, to have big capacities, but we also have a receiving problem, being able to accept it and go, Oh my gosh, thank you so much for, for this referral. And being able to receive well, which I think Emily Golden does a fantastic job. You know, she provides referral gifts and she's incredibly generous. I try to do the same thing. If we're able to receive generously and lovingly, as well as ask generously and lovingly, then it creates a very, very lush network. But we have to get beyond this idea that our performance, our production, um, and a scarcity of resources is, you know, the problem. It's not, it's our, it's it's our, it's our thinking that that's where our value lies. Yeah. And it goes back to that. You know, it's like your, your weight does not define you. It doesn't Mm. define your worth, your number of clients, your annual income, your monthly income. Mm -hmm. None of those things define you as an individual. They don't define success unless that's how you determine success. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, if you're an impact-driven person, a heart-centered person, you're less likely, I think, to have those numbers be what's driving you. However, at the end of the day, we all do need a certain level of income in order to provide for our families. So there is that to consider. But I do think there's so much emphasis on that productivity and the bro marketing that hmm. we see online all the time that we have mm-hmm. to perform at a certain level. So if we are going to give something away, then we're not going to reach those performance status that yeah. we think we need to reach. But Lisa, I want to mm-hmm. turn the table for just a second because mm-hmm. you said something earlier, um, of, you know, you linked in the psychology, the therapist and really doing that inner work. And as women in business, And as, you know, moms, you're a mom, I'm a mom, a lot of our listeners are moms. Um, We have a lot of hats that we wear. We have a lot of plates to fill and Mm -hmm. shoes to fill and all that good stuff. And anxiety can really rise. Whether we had anxiety in our youth or as we were going through college or in our 20s, whatever, having a business can either escalate or introduce anxiety. And I know Mm -hmm. you've had your experiences with that. I've obviously had my lifelong experience with that. I would love for you to, from the coaching perspective, what influence does that have on entrepreneurs, coaches in general? And what are some of the ways that you have navigated that? I don't know if I told you this or mentioned this, but I struggled with severe anxiety and depression in my teens and my early twenties. And I, I was so hell bent on healing myself, especially I'd say in my, in my late twenties. And I didn't feel like the resources I had were sufficient enough to do that. I, uh, at times was crippled by anxiety. Uh, and I like to call myself a, uh, an extrovert with social anxiety. And I don't really have it anymore because of the healing work that I've done, but truly I love people and my anxiousness got in the way of having a great life. And that was where coaching changed the game completely for me because it had me realize that I could be responsible and make choices outside of my anxiety that actually healed it as a byproduct instead of just managing the symptoms like medicine or meditating or uh, not doing the things that scared me so much. And of course, like there's, you need to manage it to a certain level before you can transform it. And I'm a, I'm also a proponent of if you need medication, please support yourself. Sometimes we just need that in order to get through what's next. But I think that at a certain level, if we're willing to, we can 
identify what the breakthrough would be in starting a business, having a business and finding satisfaction and success in a business that would have us transform our relationship to our anxiety so that it doesn't actually prevent us from doing the things that they want. And that was, that was my journey. I decided to become an entrepreneur because I saw the breakthrough in being able to manage my anxiety in the face of high pressure and my own performance context. And it wasn't easy, but it was like a, this is my lifelong journey. This is my transform it, which means I need to be on the field with my anxiety in the face of starting a business and figure out how to manage how to support myself through it. And thankfully I've gotten to a place where, where I can, Um, but it's, it's a, it's a real thing. And there has to be a very strong commitment to the breakthrough in that in order to get through what is required to start a business. Cause it is is not for everyone. I love that you said a couple of things and I'm going to pull out some words that you said, and I'm hoping that you can't hear my dogs barking because they are going (laughs) crazy at the moment. Um, oh, that's fine. And I can go on and on about this and my journey and anxiety and business too. So feel free to yeah. hand the mic back to me too. So you said the word responsible, you said the word choices, mm-hmm. and you said the word commit. And those three words are absolutely key to navigating any sort of mental health challenge. Those three words, responsible, choices, choice, and commitment. And I think we have to be responsible for our own self, our own healing, our own happiness. No one can make us happy. No one can make us less anxious. No one can heal us. We have to do that inner work ourselves. And whether a therapist works for you or a coach works for you, that's going to be dependent on who you are and what your journey has been and how receptive you are to different types of therapy, right? Um, But then we have choices. And this is what I love to talk about so much is because we have a choice to actually take action over our anxiety, (laughs) right? We Mm -hmm. have the choice and we have the choice to stay stuck and stagnant and frustrated and overwhelmed and anxious and depressed and all unhappy, all of those things, or we have the choice to actively take action and be a participant in our own journey to heal, to get better. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with anyone that you have to get better, but feel better. Mm -hmm. And then the other word that you said was commit. Once we start, if we choose to commit, And we take responsibility for that action and continuing in that growth phase, we'll reach a goal. Like what you said, you have overcome and it's not as present now. And what a beautiful thing to be able to have this new life experience where you can approach situations, people, your journey as a whole in a whole new light. Yes. I want to double tap everything that you just said. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Responsibility, choice, and commitment. And it it starts with, it it all starts with responsibility, being responsible for where we're at and what what we want in life. I think getting clear about, well, where do I want to be right now? And sometimes it's okay to be stuck with anxiety, feelings, not feeling great, not taking the next step, not taking on a business. In the last three years because me and my husband were trying to get pregnant, had a really hard time. Um, I was pregnant and then I had a child. I, I took responsibility for not moving my business to the next level. I went, you know what? I actually just need to stay here because what I'm really committed to is um, getting pregnant, staying pregnant and having my first year with my child be so present. And when we become responsible for our choices and what we're committed to, we get back in the driver's seat and whatever choice we make from full responsibility is empowered. Even if on the outside, it might not seem empowered. If it's empowered for you, then fantastic. If you're empowered to just like, you know, take a nap every single day, then do that, you know, create a, create a job or create a business that allows you to do that. But it's important to start with responsibility. 
um, for what we want and what we need. And it also brings up the, the quote that our trauma and what's happened in our past isn't our fault, but it is our responsibility to change our relationship to it. And that's exactly, you hit the nail on the head. That is exactly what had coaching be so revolutionary to me that therapy didn't quite hit was me taking full responsibility, like being back in the driver's seat of going, okay, this is actually what I need. I need to get out of corporate America. I need to take on, uh, you know, true self-care. I need to face my fears. I need to get into different social circles, get back to the gym, all of those things. I was like, oh, I can be responsible for what I want. And notice when I'm back into the victimhood of why am I this way? I wish it weren't this way. And that's just, you know, sometimes we do need to be there, but at the same time, I didn't want to be there. So getting responsible for when I wasn't being responsible was so clutch for me. Yeah. And, and owning that and staying committed to it, right? Because it, yeah, it is a journey. Everything's a journey. So mm-hmm. Lisa, let's circle back now to coaching because Mm -hmm. you mentioned the difference between credentialed and certified. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that? And then I would like to expand on that a little bit. Like what is the, what is the true difference at its core, but also what do we need to know to be able to recognize what we need Mm -hmm. from someone, whether they are one or the other. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I do as a master certified coach is I am an international coach federation mentor coach, which means that I am officially, um, uh, endowed with the opportunity to mentor others in being able to get their credentials and their certifications. And everyone needs, um, 10 hours of mentor coaching from a qualified mentor coach in order to get credentialed. So I'm well-informed in the core competencies of coaching. I've helped hundreds of people get their credentials. I'm I'm a nerd for this work. One of the first things that I ask my clients who are interested in hiring me as a mentor coach is why would you, if it weren't about the credential, why would you renew your credential? Why would you get your credential? And I'm talking about credentialing, not necessarily certification. And I'll, I'll get to that. That question is important because it will determine, well, first of all, my next set of questions, but it will determine whether this person is just looking to check a box because it sounds good or they feel like they feel like they should, they feel like they have to, it's the right next step, or if there's something in it for them to hone their craft in the direction of the purity of coaching of the Socratic method. If it is a checkbox or they feel like they should, or they have to, or that's just what's, what's next, we may actually want to look at, well, credentialing might not be for you. Maybe what you're interested in is getting a certification in somatic coaching or getting a certification in um, becoming a marketing strategist or going back to school for business. It's so important to identify your big what for, like, why would you decide to commit to this path, to go through mentor coaching, to go through coaching, to get more education, to become a a credentialed coach, because it is a rigorous path and you have to submit recorded calls and take an online test and show that you've done the work and et cetera, et cetera. And I'm a firm believer of identifying, well, what's your purpose? Who do you want to become? And what's the impact you want to provide here? Usually, if credentialing is the right path through the ICF, it's because the coaches that come to me say, I want to learn how to serve better. I want to learn how to transform my clients' lives better. I want to be able to be a clearing for other people and empower them in their answers, their greatness, their change. But if it's more of a, let's say a strategy or, you know, I just want to help or I want to make money or et cetera, et cetera, then you might want to look at a certification that isn't a credential, that isn't through a ICF coach training program, because it will be different. And there's nothing wrong with going 
down either path, but it really just depends on who you want to become and who you want to serve. Mm, I love that differentiation. Now, what would you say to someone who's looking to hire a life coach? Like what would they, is a credential, a credential, a credential is Mm -hmm. a certification, a certification, a certification kind of thing. Or Mm -hmm. like, what would you say if, to someone who, I mean, you've kind of answered the questions of what would you look for or Mm -hmm. how would you make that decision whether or not to become credentialed. But Mm -hmm. if you are looking to hire someone, what do you Mm -hmm. suggest people look for? So if you're looking for a high level quality life coach, first thing you want to ask is where they got their education. Where were they educated? Was it through a uh, uh, an Instagram school that had them go through a training in one weekend, or did they go to, you know, a rigorous training program? What did that look like? What's their methodology? So, what is their education in? I do like to ask what what they're certified and credentialed in, and I, you know, I, I hire exclusively credentialed coaches because that's my specialty, but I don't think every coach needs to hire a credentialed coach. They can be certified in a variety of different methods like somatic work and emotional intelligence and um, neuroscience. It, It can be many different elements. I think that having a track record of success with you as a, uh, as an avatar or as a, as the type of audience that you are is really, really necessary. So if I were to come to you, Robin, and say, have you worked with coaches who have been uh, in the field for 10 years and had business success and went from six figures to seven figures? And you were like, yeah, I've had 20 of them in the past year. Like that is absolutely my bread and butter. I would be, of course, very happy to hire you if those were right, my goals. But I think most importantly, having the connection, the chemistry with the person that you're working with, it, it's a magical component that you really cannot fake and probably will overpower the other logical reasons of who you should hire. I've seen many people without any of those other elements be hired and do great work because the chemistry is there, the connection is there, even if they're not the ideal coach for them. But it is important to ask the right questions and to be educated on what coaching is and what the coaching field is like so that you can differentiate for yourself. But sometimes you just got to throw it out the window and go, you know what, there's a magical component here that I can't explain. God is telling me something. I must hire you and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do believe that, um, there is a connection, like we're kind of like a magnet to the right people that we're meant to work with those Mm -hmm. people that are really our soulmate clients. And we're going to be able to impact the most. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's important to follow our, our intuition because our intuition is oftentimes science and logic that we just don't recognize yet. 100%. And and, and you mentioned God just a second ago, and I like to say my intuition is the Holy Spirit knocking on me, <laughs> on, my, on my mind <laughs> saying, hey, here's what you need to do. Listen, listen. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, <laughs> um, so, okay, Lisa, as we start to wrap up, is there anything about the coaching industry or... <sighs> life in general that you've experienced that you would like to share that would be very profound for the listeners to, to really take home and be like, Oh gosh, she said this and I can't live without this information. This is amazing. (laughs) Oh man. Where do I start? Mm, I think everything's, everything begins with self-awareness. We cannot change what we're not aware of. And if we're If we're looking to make a change that just isn't happening, likely there's a seed of self-awareness that needs to happen. And that awareness could be, I'm not taking responsibility for this, or you know what, I'm actually resisting the help that I need, or I'm not delegating enough, or I 
you know, I've, I've stopped myself because I have a scarcity, uh, a money mindset that's based in scarcity, but everything starts with self-awareness with the self-awareness comes responsibility with responsibility comes twice and change. So it was a great quote by Victor Frankel. Have you heard of his book? Mansur? Oh, it's one of my favorite books of all time. His quote goes something like, I'm paraphrasing here. Um, between stimulus and reaction is a space. And in that space lies power. And in that power lies our growth and freedom. And all of my work as a coach is being able to be aware of the stimulus and the response so that we can stretch that, that space out sufficiently for us to decide how our life goes. It's that responsibility, that choice, and that commitment that you spoke of. And there's infinite power in being able to do that in whatever which way we can. I'm a huge fan of the coaching industry being an answer to that, especially the professionalism of the coaching industry, but any which way that you can find and prolong that space for yourself, we then become a freer, kinder, more powerful human. Less anxious too. Less anxious. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to say that you mentioned perfectionism earlier, and I think all of these things that we've talked about today allow us to let go of that need to be perfect. And I'm going to link in the show notes and the episode that we recently did with Kate Volman. And we talked all about creativity and tapping into that awareness within of what, what we love to do, what we're passionate about and really unleashing our creativity so that we, but doing so in a way that we let that perfectionism go mm. and we don't hold on to that mm -hmm. so that it prevents us from recognizing what fuels us and what can move us forward versus staying stuck in that tight knot of perfectionism, anxiety, frustration, overwhelm, and all those things that we do have the responsibility to recognize, to choose to tap into, and then commit to making the changes so that we can live a happier life. Because ultimately, mm -hmm. if we if we don't do this for ourselves, we can't help other people. We're And we're going to end up hurting the relationships that really matter the most. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We are mirrors for other people. We are the clearings for other people. Essence begets essence. Anxiety begets anxiety. So being able to bring a clearing and an energy and a way of being that is positive and empowering is healing in itself. I'm a big fan of uh, this idea of interrupting generational trauma. Mm -hmm. And we do that by taking on our own work, not because we have to, or it's our fault, but because it is such a powerful and empowering way to make ripples in our history as humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to leave the listeners with one day we were having lunch and you guys, mm -hmm. Lisa, I drive into the city at, just to have lunch with Lisa. It's amazing. <laughs> she's just, she's so, uh, just such a light to me. But anyway, oh. we were talking about this whole coaching thing. And I said, gosh, you know, I have a doctorate degree. I have certifications in brand strategy. I, you know, have all of these things, mm -hmm. all this education, all of these skills, all of the experiences I've had. And I'm like, I, I wonder like, if, should I go and get credentialed? Should I get a certification in coaching? What should, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she asked me a question. So point blank. And she said, would you do anything different? Mm -hmm. And I want you to take that question and evaluate everything about your journey right now. Ask yourself, what would I do different if I X, Y, Z? What would you do different if you hired a coach? What would you do different if you got a certification? What would you do different if you addressed mental health challenges like anxiety or depression what would you do different how would your relationships be different 
And I'm going to leave you with those questions. Lisa, thank you so much for being here. This was a delight. Oh, it was for me too. I feel the same way about you. You are such a light to me and I love your energy, your presence, your wisdom, your intellect, and especially the the friendship and camaraderie as women in business. It is always uplifting to be around you. Well, thank you. That means the world to me. And Lisa, will you please tell the listeners where they can find you, learn more from you and connect with you? Yes, absolutely. You can email me at lisa.pachence, P-A-C-H-E-N-C-E, at accomplishmentcoaching.com. You can find me on my website, www.coachingwithlp.com. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and Instagram. And I run a thriving coaching community called Coaches Creating Community with a capital U-N-I-T-Y. Please feel free to connect. I always, always enjoy broadening my network. Listeners, if you enjoyed this episode too and found it helpful, will you please go check Lisa out, number one. And number two, will you leave us a rating and review and then share this episode with someone that you know may be contemplating some of the things that we've been talking about. Or maybe you know that they've been struggling and therapy just hasn't cut it and they can use Lisa to help them have a significant breakthrough. Whatever the case may be, I appreciate you being here. I love you all and I will see you all next week.